Hey folks, welcome to the channel. In today's build, we're going to work on a simple stock removal EDC knife. This one's going to be made out of 1095, and I'm calling it my Silky. One thing I'm going to try on this knife that I've never done before is a Hamon. So let's go. I don't do a lot of plain stock removal knives, but I wanted to focus on the Hamon on this one and just have fun with it. Even though this knife was small, I still wanted it to reflect my style. I wanted it to have the false edge and the same kind of profile that my knives usually have. The one thing I did change though was the false edge is straight on this one, referred to more as a harpoon point. Uh, it was just a small knife and the swooping false edge just didn't work here. As usual, I'm putting in the layout lines on this knife. Without these, you're totally flying blind, so this is a critical step. After putting all the layout lines on it, I had to go and decide how I was going to do the false edge. And because it was straight, it's a lot easier to do this. I just used my 45 degree angle jig and put them in on the horizontal mode on the grinder. This worked like a charm. You can see why some makers put in the harpoon points instead of the swoopy false edge like I do. Some people think these small knives are quicker and they take less time. They really don't. I actually think they can be harder. With such a narrow blade, the bevel is a little tougher to put on. So a four inch blade or a two inch blade, I'll take a four inch blade any day. In an upcoming Triple T, I'm gonna cover freehand grinding basics. So if you're interested in learning how to grind, definitely check that one out. Here I'm just fixing the plunge line a little bit just to get it exactly the way I want it. And now I'm switching to my left hand. You're always a little different on your off hand and you can see on this grind, I don't get the bevel perfectly straight to begin with, but I fix it up eventually. I decided to add jimping on the top of this knife. That's the little grippy area for your thumb to hold on to. What you're seeing here is called a checkering file and that's what's gonna grind those lines in it. There's a link down in the description if you wanna buy one of these. I've already measured out where my holes are gonna go, just using the center punch so my drill won't wander, and then we're gonna drill the holes for the pins. If you're curious why the clamp is there, if you're ever drilling on something and it's not in a vise, you should always put a clamp there in case it grabs. You don't want it to spin around and hit you in the hand. You can actually get your fingers cut off that way. Many people always ask me why I drill holes in the handle. That's to remove weight so the knife is more balanced. Oh. 
Okay, I've normalized it three times. We are ready to put the clay on it. So, um, I don't just want, you know, sometimes you see just a wavy one. I really like it when the hamon almost looks like flames dancing and has a lot of little flamey parts. So I'm gonna attempt to do that. So I've got this, um, it's kind of like Saint Night. Uh, I ordered this online. Um, I'll put a, a link down in the description. So I'm just gonna clay up the spine and then I'm gonna start to move it down onto the blade. It's a pretty small blade, of course. So uh, I'm gonna try my best here. With such a small blade, I really didn't have much room to put any kind of fancy feathering on the clay pattern here. So it ended up being just a little bit of a wave, but maybe next time on a different blade, I'll try something else. Okay, well, hopefully that's gonna work. It's kind of on there a bit thick, but I don't really know what I'm doing. I've watched a couple of videos on this, but we'll see how that works. All right. So here we are the next day. This stuff is really, really hard, um, which is good. I got it about maybe a sixteenth, just over a sixteenth inch thick. But um, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's gonna come off very easily. Uh, I also did this one, which is um, a knife that my son is working on that we're going to do the same thing on. Uh, we'll heat treat that one at another time. But uh, we're getting ready to put this one in the quench. Oh, gotta be kidding. Yeah, that was me realizing I forgot to turn the camera on for the quench. Sorry you guys didn't see it, but after the quench, which went great, I just tapped it on my little garbage can and the clay just dropped right off. Well, we won't know if it worked until we grind it and shine it. I also forgot to videotape the hardness test. Uh, this one came out at about 59 after the temper, which is just perfect. Because I use the rest for grinding, that little shark fin always kind of ends up going back and forth on the rest and it kind of flattens it out a little bit. So I always go back and re-grind that area just so it's nice and sharp. I only took this one to 120 on the grinder, but it was a small knife so there wasn't really a lot of hand sanding to do. I really need to get a smaller version of my Maker's Mark. The shark was a little big on this one. I guess it's fine, but I wish it, I had a smaller one to put on these small knives. All right, I'm ready for the acid. I've got this uh, hand sanded down to 2000. My maker's mark is on it. Let's see how it goes. Well, here it is after the second dip. Looks kind of cool. It's got a little... It's got a little uh, thing here, but I think the handle's gonna end up covering that. So I've got the etching done on this, now we're ready to do the handle. So what I'd like to do is get two handles. I'm probably going to do another one of these. I kind of like this pattern. So I'm going to try to get 
two of these out of here. It's important after you drill your pinholes, put pins in it so they don't separate and you get exactly the same shape on both scales. I've marked each scale with calipers and now I'm gonna to go to my 45 degree bevel jig and put a bevel on the front. No scallops on these guys. These are so tiny I don't think you'd even see it. The handle material on this build is another maple burl, this time dyed a brownish color, and these are from Jarrett Fleming, and I'll put a link to his site down in the description. Here I decided to show you guys my grit progression when I'm sanding uh, handles. I always start at 220, then to 400, then to 800, and then to 1000 grit. And I find if I get all the way up to 1000 grit, and then later I buff it, I get a nice, super nice sheen on it, and it ends up being really shiny and beautiful. All right, we're ready for glue up. I've already got my epoxy poured. Just an important tip here, folks. Always do a dry fit with your pins before you put the glue on, especially if you're using five-minute epoxy. I had to be careful here not to grind off my jimping. Now I'm removing some bulkiness from the scales just so that it's a little more sleek. In case you wanted to put this in your belt, I didn't want it to be really thick. I'm going to go through that same grit progression, but I'm also going to use a piece of steel and put the sandpaper on that so that I can do the tang and make sure it matches and it's all nice and flat. <laughs> 